This is day 46 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the GCSE exams, each day from Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new six mark question so that you can use these as part of your revision. There's a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also the playlist containing all of the videos in the series so far. Today's question comes from the cells topic of GCSE Biology Paper 1. Before you dive into having a go at answering this question, remember, this is not an essay question. There aren't any marks at all in GCSE Science for writing in paragraphs or even in full sentences. And actually, you can make your life and your examiner's life easier if you answer in the form of bullet points or by using a table. This allows you to write fewer words, which will save you time and can also add clarity to your answer and make it easier for your examiner to give you marks. If you haven't done so already, now is the time to pause the video and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. The first really important thing about answering this question is that the command word is to evaluate. Now, in all of the GCC science papers, questions that have the command word evaluate share one common mark scheme. And to get level three, which is five or six marks, you need to have written a strongly justified conclusion. What that means is that if at the end of your question, you haven't given an answer where you say this thing is best and you haven't backed that up with evidence in your answer, then you can't receive more than four marks. So it's really important to make sure that you've done this. Before we start comparing the advantages and disadvantages of different sources of stem cells, we need to think about what they actually are and the types of conditions that they can be used to treat. Stem cells, as we know, are undifferentiated cells, which are later able to become specialised to their function. So that might be by growing additional subcellular structures or by changing shape or things like that. And so what this means is that stem cells can be used to treat diseases or conditions where we need a new source of cells. So that could include things like paralysis if somebody has had their spinal cord severed, but also conditions like anemia and also diabetes and also leukemia. And then if we then go on to think about the different sources of stem cells, there are really two key types. There are embryonic stem cells, which have come from a new embryo, which is only divided a couple of times to make a few identical cells. And then also there are adult stem cells. So for instance, the stem cells that are found in your bone marrow. The first big advantage of using adult stem cells is that depending on the type of condition that we're treating, you may be able to use the stem cells of the patient themselves. So this isn't going to be true if we're thinking about treating some kind of genetic disorder, but it will be true if, for instance, someone has suffered an injury. So if, for instance, their spine has been severed, we may be able to grow them a new spine using their own stem cells. So this is a big advantage because it means that those stem cells have the exact same genetics as the patient that they're being used to treat. And that's a really big deal because it means there isn't a risk of rejection, which is what happens when you have any kind of organ transplant or cell transplant. And so that patient wouldn't need to take immunosuppressant drugs. And we'd rather that people didn't take immunosuppressant drugs because when you suppress the immune system, you massively increase the risk of infection with other communicable diseases. And that can be really dangerous. Another big advantage of adult stem cells is that using them is a more established technique. We know more about it. We've been doing it for longer and therefore it has better success rates. But there are some disadvantages as well. So, for instance, one big disadvantage is that adult stem cells aren't able to turn into every single kind of cell available. You have stem cells within your bone marrow and they can become red blood cells, they can become white blood cells, but they couldn't become heart muscle. So that means that it limits the number of different conditions that we can treat using them. Also, you could talk about the disadvantages of having surgery for the adult patient and the fact that it's quite a painful procedure and all those sorts of things. If we think about our embryonic stem cells, then one big advantage is that they can become every single type of cell because they're taken from an embryo that, if left to, um, to grow in a woman's uterus, could become a fully formed baby, although it's not there yet. Another big advantage is that it's not a painful process because the embryo isn't at a stage where it's actually able to perceive that pain. So whereas an adult undergoing an operation would find that very uncomfortable, the embryo can't feel that pain. 
Also, if we need more cells, it's relatively easy to make these in the lab. Once we have a fertilised egg, we can just allow that to divide until we've got quite a lot of cells. Whereas with an adult cell procedure, we might have to go back and harvest more stem cells, and that's another painful procedure, and so on. But there are disadvantages to the embryonic process. So there's obviously this big issue of morality and the fact that the embryo can't consent to the procedure. Now, it's really important at the end of our answer that we write a conclusion. For this question, there isn't a really clear winner. So I'd be kind of hedging my bets a bit and saying, well, in some situations, the adult stem cells are better, but in some situations, the embryonic stem cells are better. So I would probably say something like, in conclusion, for a disease that can be treated using adult stem cells, this is desirable because of those increased success rates and the reduced chances of rejection. But where they can't be used, embryonic stem cells can still cure many other conditions. Now, we often talk about the fact that in order to get six marks, you don't need to have included everything that I've put on the slide. So here I would say that in order to receive six marks for this question, you need to have talked about both embryonic and adult stem cells. You need to have compared these two different sources. You also need to have put something about the types of diseases that they can be used to cure. And then you need to have included at least one advantage and one disadvantage of each of those different sources of stem cells. For the final Friday of the six mark challenge, we'll be going back to quantitative chemistry and looking at this tricky limiting reactant question. Don't forget, there's a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also a link to the playlist containing all of the videos in the series so far.